Should you be buying a house during this recession in 2022? Make sure to stay to the very end of this video. I'm gonna be giving you five reasons why you should be buying a house in today's market. If this is the first time you're checking out my channel, my name is Sean Uihara. I'm a branch manager with Loan Depot helping you finance your homes all across the country. Whether you're a first time home buyer or a seasoned investor, or simply looking to refinance your mortgage, I've got you covered. There's a link in my description below with more information on how to get your mortgage right. And I created this channel to simplify home ownership. And in today's video, I wanna talk about what's going on today. The market shifted, rates have jumped up, are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? Really just depends, I guess, what the definition is for the day. But there are opportunities that are out there in the market. Now, before I get into the rest of the video, I will say this. Yes, I am in the real estate industry. I do make money off of our clients buying and refinancing homes. However, the purpose of this video and this channel is to simplify home ownership. I'm giving you my perspective on things that I see. Now, many of you might disagree with what I'm saying and my entire video, and that's fine. But I will say this, there are clients that we are working with that are winning in today's market. Now, the doom and gloom, I do not buy into it. I read it, I understand it. I've been in this business for 15 years. I remember the 2008 crash very, very clearly, but this market is completely different. Now, if you're about doom and gloom, you might as well just leave now because this video is not for you. And for those of you that think, optimistically and with an abundance and growth mindset, this video is for you and you're my people. So I wanna break down five ways that our clients are winning today. Number one, the most obvious thing is that there's less competition. The minute rates jumped up back in July, it really stressed out the market. We went from 3% to 5%, 6%, 7% so fast that even when we were pricing loans out, we couldn't even keep up with the price changes throughout the day. So if you got pre-approved, you might have been qualified for 400,000 one week, the next week it could have dropped to 350. The market was so volatile, it terrified so many buyers out there. They literally gave up. They said, this is not the market, I'm not gonna buy, I'm gonna continue to rent. However, there's always a silver lining in every situation. Being that many of you might have given up, hopefully my viewers and my subscribers, you guys didn't give up. You guys kept looking. Those of you that quit, it made it a lot easier for those that wanted to buy. Because if you compare the last two years of the market where there were 20, 30, 40 offers on a house, you had to pay your own closing costs. You had to go above the list price of the house just to get your offer accepted. To now think that there are way more homes on the market and you can actually take your time to look at this house to think about it over the weekend, to talk to your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance, and decide, is this the right house for us? That is a total game changer because many of you that might have bought or even quit during the last two years, that buying frenzy was stressful. There was a few clients that I had to talk off the ledge because they wanted to quit. They didn't wanna buy, but they hung in there. They knew that there was opportunity. Now, same thing with today's market. You can buy into the doom and gloom and the market's gonna crash and it's gonna be the worst thing ever which maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't think it's necessarily gonna get that bad, but the fact that in today's market, there's less competition, that is a huge advantage because you don't have to go out today and write an offer sight unseen. You can actually take your time. And to me, that's one of the most important things because you wanna enjoy this buying process and not just write offers blindly just because that's what you have to do to get your offer accepted. And the second pro is that sellers are willing to negotiate. Again, like I just mentioned, the last couple of years, if you were thinking about buying a house, you had to have your own down payment. There were some down payment assistance programs, but if the seller knew that you were using that type of financing, a lot of listing agents did not like that because they looked at you as a weak buyer. Now, again, I've talked about this in other videos about VA financing and low down payment types of programs. As long as you meet the guidelines, you're good to go. But for a lot of agents, they wanna get paid. They wanna get paid as fast as possible with the least amount of resistance. So if they think your loan is weak, it doesn't incentivize them to take that deal because they wanna get paid as fast as possible. So thinking about the market where we are today, sellers are willing to cover your closing costs. Sellers are willing to negotiate on the price. Now with a house that sits on the market, every single day that that house doesn't get an offer, it hurts the seller that much more. Because just like you as a home buyer, 
you want your interest rate in the twos and threes, your mind is still stuck in 2020 and 2021. And the same goes for all these sellers. They want to sell their house in a day with 30 offers and you paying $50,000 above because there's only one house in the neighborhood that's for sale and it's theirs. But now there's 10 other houses on the block for sale. And guess what? The neighbor just reduced their home by $10,000. So what do you think this seller has to do today? They've got to reduce their price if they want to be competitive because they don't want to keep paying their mortgage and they want to cash out while they still can. So as a buyer, you hold all the cards right now. You can ask for your closing costs to get paid. Maybe get the seller to pay your entire year's worth of HOA fees for you. Maybe get the seller to make all those other repairs that you couldn't ask for the last few years. These are all the little things that you might not be thinking about because you're so focused on interest rates or what the media is telling you, but all these little nuances that happen on every single deal favor you as the buyer, because imagine if you're the seller and now you have an accepted offer on your house and the buyer comes back and says, I want X, Y, and Z fixed, or we're not moving forward. You're going to do it because your house has been sitting on the market for how long with no offers. You're going to fix all these things that the buyer wants. So as a buyer, Remember, you hold all the cards. The deck of cards has your name on it. In fact, it's engraved with your name on it. So take advantage of that when you're out there shopping for your house. Another pro is that you're eliminating your rent. Here in Las Vegas, we do not have rent control. I've shared some of these horror stories of some of our clients that have reached out that their rent has gone up two, three, five hundred dollars The highest I've ever heard was $1,000 a month. Think about that for a second. I'm gonna let that sink in. Imagine your rent went from call it $1,500 to $2,500 a month. What are you going to do? Where do you get this extra thousand dollars a month to pay your rent, right? Are you going to start driving Uber doing Postmates? What are you going to do to make up that amount of money? That's an insane amount of money. But if you can purchase a home, you can take advantage of low down payment programs like FHA, USDA, even some of these down payment assistance grant programs that are available. You can get into the house and you can control your largest living expense. And I think this is one of the things that we ignore so much growing up because we're not taught to create a budget. We're not taught how money works. All we're taught is go get a job, pay your bills, and maybe you retire in 40 years, but no one's really showing you how to go from being a tenant to a homeowner. That's one of the things, if you can understand the benefits of being a homeowner, many of you that are still renting you would go back and say, I wish I would have bought sooner because the sooner you get your foot in the door, the sooner you start building wealth, not only for you, but for the rest of your family. And one of the other things that has been coming up was this whole marry the house, date the rate saying that someone made up, which has a lot of truth to it too, because when you're looking to buy your house, you're falling in love with the property. And I've said this before, you don't even need a realtor to tell you that the minute you walk in, you know that's the house. You can immediately start envisioning holidays, your kids, and everyone that's going to be hanging out at your house. I know when I bought my place, I did. The minute I opened that door, I think I called my dad and I said, this is it. We're writing an offer on this house. Um, and this is, this is the one I think that's going to work. And sure enough, after about 10 or so offers, we finally got one accepted. Um, but I truly believe that you as a buyer, you will know exactly what you want. No one needs to convince you otherwise. However, the interest rate that you get today, it's never permanent. You can refinance. That is a matter of fact. As long as the LTV, your loan to value, and there is a tangible benefit for you to refinance, you always have the option to do so. So even if you got into your house today and your rate was 7%, you are in that for the time being. I think it's safe to say, we would all say that in the next probably two, three years or so, maybe even sooner, interest rates are going to be better. In fact, if you're still watching this video, I want you to comment below and you tell me where interest rates are going to be in the next three to five years. Do you think they're going to be better or worse? So comment better or worse. And I want to see what you guys think. In my opinion, I think rates will be better within the next several years. So if you are looking at buying a house today, the rate and the payment that you're in is temporary. However, the thing you should consider is not only what your rent payment is today, but what is your landlord going to increase your rent to? Many of you that I've talked to, you've never asked your landlord that question. Your lease could be up in three months and you're not being proactive and thinking about what that answer is going to be. 
Now you need to do that if renting is your thing, because what if your landlord is going to increase it 500 bucks? If you don't have it, now you're putting yourself in a bad spot. So now if you're going to find another place to rent, factoring in your first month, your last month security deposit, you probably got enough for a down payment on a house. Now imagine we can get you connected with one of our top agents that we get the seller to pay all your closing costs. You might literally be in a house for a few thousand dollars today. So the biggest thing is, is looking at the opportunity, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, and not looking for ways for things not to work. Because there's a lot of programs out there, like a 2-1 buy down, which is really cool because you actually get a reduced interest rate for the first two years of your mortgage. Many lenders are talking about this lately because it's a great strategy for a serious buyer in the market. For example, let's say today the rate is 7%. Year one of your mortgage, your interest rate would be 5%. Year two, it's 6% and year three. And for the remaining life of the loan, you're fixed at 7%. Now, why this is a good program, it's that the minute rates drop, I can reassure you this, every loan officer out there in the country is gonna call every single one of their clients because they're gonna refinance you. Now, you might think, well, that sounds like an adjustable rate mortgage, but it's not. And here's why. When you look at the mechanics of an adjustable rate mortgage and why it failed back in 2008, was because when lenders were qualifying buyers for the loan, they were actually qualifying them on the teaser rate. So they were qualifying them on that introductory rate. But on this 2-1 buy-down strategy, we're qualifying you at today's mortgage rate, and let's say it was 7%, that's the rate you qualify for. So we know that you still meet the guidelines in order to make that payment. Back in 2008, you were qualified at the teaser rate, which means the minute that rate went up, you're done. And that's why a lot of people could not qualify and they lost their houses. This 2-1 buy-down strategy works in my opinion, especially in this market, because I definitely predict in the next three years, rates are gonna be much lower. You're gonna refinance and save a ton of money and you're already gonna have built equity up into your property. And most of all, when you're looking at the market today, because of the turmoil that we're seeing and all the uncertainty, you have to look at real estate as a long-term play. If you're trying to buy a house thinking you're gonna sell it in six months, make some money, or even in a year, this might not be the market for you. And I would say maybe you should wait on the sidelines or maybe pay cash for the house. Don't finance it. Don't leverage it because you might put yourself in a bad position. However, for those of you that are looking to move into the property and this is going to be your primary residence, how long do you plan on staying there? If your vision is a lot shorter, you may not want to buy because what if the market drops another 10% and you're only putting down three or 5%, you might be upside down on your mortgage where you are either forced to rent it or you'd have to look at doing a short sale. So keep those things in mind. And this is why it's really good to have a great real estate agent by your side that understands the market because you wanna play out some of these worst case scenarios because in the event something does happen that maybe none of us here on YouTube or anyone else is talking about, you wanna be prepared for that. But I don't think we're gonna see anything as crazy as what we did in 2008. I think the banks learned from their mistakes and proof of that was them offering the forbearances during COVID. I think if they were stupid, they would have let everyone foreclose on their homes. They would have taken all the homes back and we would have had a massive crash, but they didn't. They preserved values. In fact, it only led to values going up because there was no inventory and then rates dropped. So even though today rates are at 7%, you might think that's a really high interest rate, but remember the historical rate over the last 50 years is probably around 7.75%. You can even go to Freddie Mac's website and look that information up for yourself. And if you're a first time home buyer, not sure of where to start, make sure to hit the description below. There's a link to my first time home buyer guide where you can learn everything you're going to need to be successful in this market. So thanks for watching. Share this video with a friend. I'll see you on the next one.